the, sure. the rising returns is just indicative of, of the online shopping season that, that we are seeing. Overall, is it a net positive for retailers or, or is it not enough to make up for lost traffic at this point? Well, certainly we've seen an enormous number of changes this year and tremendous innovation taking place. Uh, Black Friday this year, just last week, uh, we saw 100 million shoppers online for the first time ever. That's up almost 10 percent from 2019. So we, we've seen this happening and, and uh, playing out over the course of this year. And you've seen retailers adapting both in terms of their relationships with their logistic partners, uh, the way they're using their own stores, uh, things like buy online, pick up in store and curbside delivery. So uh, I think this is something we've seen coming and they're going to continue to uh, a, a achieve additional efficiency in the supply chain. Uh, and, and this is part of it, finding creative solutions to these kinds of challenges. Still, I just wonder, Matt, with the, with the holiday season very much on right now, we're also seeing rising COVID cases and rising lockdowns ac across this country with no fiscal stimulus in sight. And, and what that adds up to overall for, for the retailers in their make or break season right now. Yeah, you're right. And we put out our holiday forecast a couple of weeks ago, forecasting that sales would grow this holiday season between 3.6 and 5.2%. That may sound very, very high. It's it's a little higher than a year ago. Last year was 4%. We're actually sort of in the middle of the pack. There are a number of other analysts that have forecasted 7, 8, 9%. Uh, we're not that bullish, but we think this is reasonable given overall consumer strength. But it is absolutely true that we need additional fiscal stimulus. There are millions of American families out there that are suffering right now. There are people out of work, millions of unemployed Americans. Uh, we've been very vocal in our support for the bipartisan legislation that's being discussed now. In fact, we were the first major trade group last week, a uh, week ago today, to put out a statement in support of that $900 billion package that's being discussed and have discussed it with Secretary Mnuchin, uh, people like Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, who's leading it. Uh, the chairs of the House Problem Solvers Caucus, as well as leadership in the House and Senate. So we're going to continue to push that uh, and support it. And we hope that it arrives in time to, uh, to help all these families that really need the support right now. Matt, we talk, of course, uh, very often about all those uh, older retailers that are struggling at the moment. But uh, is the flip side also true that there's never been a better time for someone to start their own new retail company, uh, whatever form that might take, with uh, platforms like Shopify that exist to make uh, selling stuff online as easy as ever. And, and frankly, uh, rents, if you want to open a bricks and mortar store, probably at record lows. Yeah, well, I, I think you make a really good point. And uh, we've seen that show up in a number of different places. I mean, certainly look back a decade ago, what happened to the companies that were created in the midst of the Great Recession, 2008, 9, 10. Uh, some of what you were talking about a minute ago, about uh, new IPOs and things like that. So um, this is a great time for innovation. Uh, some of the predictions this year, for example, about the number of stores that would close or bankruptcies that we would see just haven't materialized. Part of that is because consumers have been relatively healthy. Part of that is because on a net basis, we've seen new businesses opening to offset the closings. And there's an enormous amount of innovation taking place on the issue of returns. There's a company headquartered right here in Washington, uh, Optoro, a big partner for many retailers, helping them process returns efficiently. Uh, and it's happening. Uh, and I talked to senior executives at UPS today to talk about their shipping issues. Uh, lots of innovation taking place. They are working very diligently. Great, great delivery record so far. We're looking forward to getting all those gifts to uh, American families. And the biggest gift of all, of course, would be some additional pandemic relief. Yes. So on that front, Matt, Wall Street, we, everyone's very focused on the vaccine. And this is shaping up to be a critical week on that front. Once it comes, once people start getting it, what does that do for the retail picture in this country, both for the consumer, but also as far as what's permanent and what's temporary in terms of comebacks? Yeah, well, I, and Sarah, I think that's a great question. The, the issue of how much of this consumer behavior has changed permanently and fundamentally, and, and how much of us as Americans go back to, uh, to our old behaviors, uh, I think that's that's going to play itself out. But certainly a lot of this is going to be permanent change. People will do more. We saw across all demographic groups this entire year, uh, regardless of the age, people doing much more online. Some of that will remain sticky. Uh, great efficiency in the supply chain. Uh, those gains aren't going to be given back. We'll have more efficient supply chains. Uh, customers are going to continue to expect certain kinds of delivery and fulfillment opportunities that have been rolled out by retailers this year. 
they won't give that up. They're going to want the, the convenience and they're going to expect to be able to maintain that in the future. So I think, you know, with those kinds of innovations and that kind of uh, resilience in the system against the backdrop of, of a year next year that could be really bullish, uh, we get the vaccine rolled out as, as we all believe it will be. I talked to a senior executive at one of the major pharma, uh, pharmaceutical companies last week. They said end of April, early May, for everyone that wants it, I know the timelines are going to move based on things. I think we could be set up for a really big comeback for consumers next year. So we see job growth rebound, a lot of consumer confidence. There's pent up demand. We're going to want to go out, travel, have experiences. That's going to help retail. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.